Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we have a very important question to answer, and that is, uh, when did Linux become so much like Mac OS Big Sur? And how are all these changes showing up all at once? It seems like for such a impending big release from Mac OS, a big redesign, a visual refresh, it seems like it's reverberating around the Linux community. We have the final stable release of Deep in version 20. That's what we're looking at today. But I can't, as I poke around this OS, I can't help but think to myself, boy howdy, Apple is so influential in their design language. Uh, and we're gonna unpack that and a whole lot more in, uh, in this look at Deep in 20. Okay, so for the uninitiated, Deep in is a Debian based distribution that comes out of Deep in Technologies, which is an open source company based in China. Now, uh, geopolitical statements aside, and no matter whose country is spying on whose and blah, 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 it seems like Deep in cannot escape uh, from its reputation from a few years back where it got caught uh, snooping uh, or doing just some weird internet pings. Uh, specifically from its app store. Now, I'm only gonna mention that up front in this particular video, not to f add fuel to the fire, but just to name the obvious so that everybody in the comments can just calm down. Um, now, since then, I think Deepin has undergone a fair bit of scrutiny in subsequent releases and has showed up with nothing nefarious. So that is all I'm gonna say about that. We're gonna drop it and we're gonna move on because I think Deepin is one of those projects that shows just how much polish and uh, and just how much change and innovation can come uh, when you're focused on what you want to achieve and also you don't give a heck about what GNOME or KDE are doing, you just want to do your own thing. And uh, for some reason, I, I'd love to know the business model behind Deepin because this has got some serious development chops behind it. Uh, these guys have either UX designers, UI designers, and some pretty decent software engineering behind what they've got going on. Uh, and with each new release that comes out, it seems like they're adding more of their own custom applications that fit with their overall design language. It seems like they're adding more features to a already stonkingly beautiful desktop environment. And uh, they've just got a lot going on. Now, right at the rip here, I'm gonna say that this is the perfect alternative to Mac OS Big Sur that you have ever seen as long as you live in mainland China. Uh, basically what I mean by that is that while this distribution has so much polish, it has so much to offer the open source world, uh, best experienced if you're in or around China. Uh, reason I say that is for a few things and I'm gonna to get to them soon, but it all boils down to App Store and App Ecosystem software repositories, updates and that kind of stuff. Right, so let's uh, let's go with release notes first. This is gonna be a little bit scattershot because uh, again, Deepin hasn't been out for that long. And while I have been playing with it for a little while, the um, my overall impressions mean one thing, but in terms of what has changed and what's been updated since the last release is another. Now, while I could go through these release notes in detail, I think my strength and my contribution to the Linux YouTube space is, uh, is more uh, giving opinions on things rather than just saying, hey, here's new features. Um, what I love doing and what I, and if you're new to this space, then definitely go ahead and subscribe because apparently a lot of you aren't. So uh, go do that real quick. But I, I feel like my contribution to this space is more about showcasing different alternatives that are out there, showing you what they're good at and where their niche sits. And if it suits you and where your niche sits with what you like your computer to do, then more power to you. And, uh, and obviously open source tools and technologies are encouraged all the way along. All right, so uh, there's a lot to go through here. So I'm, I don't really know how much detail to go in. This video could easily go for half an hour, but that's not really what I want. Okay, so uh, let's talk about some big, uh, big pieces first. Now, when it comes to what is this based on, like I said before, it's based on Debian 10.5. Uh, it has either the Linux kernel 5.4 or 5.7 sitting at its base. So the kernel 5.4 is for those that want an older, uh, more stable, more polished kernel, if you will. And 5.7 is for those who need an upgraded uh, hardware management, basically, or newer hardware support, I should say. 
Um, also, they've included NVIDIA drivers out of the box because that was a huge issue for Deepin in the past. They have a really shiny installer, which I'm gonna throw a few screenshots up here that you can look through. Um, I'm not sure if this is brand new to Deepin 20, but it definitely felt pretty new from the last time I tried Deepin. And uh, they've also apparently, due to a lot of the backend work that's been going on with fingerprint readers lately, they've added that to the software as well. Now, I have not tried it natively on my XPS 9570 uh, because I just, I'm not gonna be natively installing this OS on my hardware. That just is what it is. Uh, so those are kind of the big names. Uh, in terms of underlying core stuff that has changed, but then we have the Deepin desktop environment itself. Now, for everybody who's run Deepin before, you kind of have two different modes, and for somehow, uh, some reason, Deepin manages to perfectly manage that uh, that uh, tension between emulating macOS or Windows 10 or landing somewhere in the middle. So this panel, for starters, has uh, a lot of flexibility built into it, to a point. You will, you will hit a ceiling eventually. I would say it's more customizable than GNOME, a whole, lot, a whole lot less customizable than KDE Plasma. So first of all, we have fashion mode, which looks a bit more like Mac OS X. We have efficient mode, which looks more like a traditional Windows panel. Uh, you can change the location of the panel to any side of the screen. Uh, to my knowledge, you can't separate these elements into different panels or add additional panels. But in my opinion, if you're making a free and open source uh, desktop and a free and open source operating system for the masses, uh, less options is actually better. And those who run KDE and have tiling window managers will fight me in the comments, but that's fine. So once you've decided what kind of panel you want, it breaks down to three main uh, categories. First, you have your app launcher on the side. Uh, usually it's on the left-hand side or at the top or at the top corner of the screen. And then you have different uh, icons or pins to the actual panel itself. And interestingly enough, just like how a lot of us like it in Windows 10 these days, these are centered in the fashion mode and then they are scooted over to the left in the efficient panel mode. Uh, now, you'll also notice that on the right side of the screen, you have your system controls and your uh, date, time and notifications. Notification manager looks like it got whipped straight out of Mac OS. And the calendar isn't a calendar widget, it just launches a very useless calendar application. We'll get to custom apps in a minute. So the system tray. Uh, again, these little uh, widgets here are pretty well polished. They're not as feature rich as what I've come to expect from the big players such as GNOME and KDE, and, and even Elementary OS has more richer control widgets than these. But they get the job done. It's kind of akin to uh, putting system controls on your Plank launcher. Let's talk about the multitasking view really quick. So uh, it looks kind of dodgy here because we haven't got the window tile uh, rendered for Firefox. This is because I'm on a virtual machine uh, without any hardware graphics acceleration. But uh, again, looks very, very similar to uh, mission control view on the Mac which I'm okay with because it's uh, when it is smooth, it does work quite nicely. Now, the biggest change I would say fundamentally to what the Deepin desktop environment offers to users is traditionally speaking, Deepin would have this big sliding panel, very similar to the budgie desktop that would come in with a lot of controls that basically anything that you wanted to change about the desktop, you could do with a big panel that would slide out from the right hand side here. Nowadays, that all lives inside a system preferences window. Uh, this system preferences window definitely looks like it wants to be touched. Uh, these big chunky tiles here uh, lead me to believe that they were definitely considering um, touchscreen devices and two-in-ones when they're designing this new desktop. And I applaud them for that. Now the downside is unfortunately that this uh, system settings does take away a little bit of the uniqueness of, uh, of what Deepin had to offer as a desktop environment. And you can see remnants of it in places where like the wallpaper switcher is still managed by a little thing that pops up down the side. By the way, just wanna give Deepin the award right here, right now for best wallpaper collection on any Linux distro out there. That just, I don't know, these guys get what looks really nice. But uh, yeah, with the inclusion of a uh, of a rather chunky looking battery indicator that seems like uh, it got whipped straight out of the meme, uh, yeah, this uh, this thing is looking more and more Big Sur-ish already. Now, this is the part where I'm gonna talk about uh, custom Deepin apps, because it seems like it, with every release, there are more and more and more of them. Okay, so the Photos app, for example, 
Uh, it has some basic editing built in and a really nice gallery view that you can jump between all the photos that are in a particular folder. It handles all of the importing and all of that kind of stuff. Again, it's fairly basic, but it, it, it looks exactly how it should look compared to all the other Deepin apps out there. So let's have a look. We've got a file manager, we've got a music player, we've got a calendar, we've got, in fact, it's probably easy for me to show you just here from the app launcher view. Uh, so file manager, app store, music, movie, screen capture, image viewer, album, draw, document viewer, text editor, uh, the terminal, voice notes, computer, control center, system monitor, boot maker, device manager, log viewer, the calculator, the font manager, package installer, partition editor, and the welcome app are all custom apps to deep in. That is a huge suite of custom apps that are installed out of the box. Uh, now, I do also want to mention just by way of uh, stumbling across it again, they do have a really polished welcome app that I wish more operating systems would take note from. They have a beautiful little video. You then get to choose your desktop mode that you like. You get to choose whether you want effects turned on or off and you get some really quick customizations for icon schemes. Um, not as much as some welcome apps, but uh, definitely more polished than others. So I don't have time to go through all of these custom apps, but let me break down what is consistent across all of them. If, a, if an app has a bunch of options that it wants to show you, it's gonna put them on the left-hand side. All the window controls are consistently on the right-hand side. They have this little menu button after the window controls that allows you to independently change the theme of the app. It also gives you quick access to help about and obviously exiting the app itself. Now, because all of these apps are written in the same uh, design language, it allows you to uh, flip between uh, dark and light schemes very, very easily, and also allows you to uh, set custom accent colors that also remain consistent across all of the different deep in apps. This kind of desktop consistency is just beautiful and I get super gushy whenever I start thinking about it and talking about it because I wish this is how it looked on the rest of the Linux desktop. You'll also notice that usually the search is somewhere in the middle of the window header bar. And again, if an app has search capabilities, it's usually consistent across the board. For example, photos, search in the middle. Files, search is kinda in the middle. And the system settings search is also in the middle. So what is my opinion about this, uh, about this look and feel overall? Look, it's very Mac Big Sur-ish. We got these massive curved corners. Uh, we got lots of shadows, lots of blur, lots of uh, kind of not quite skeuomorphic, but definitely uh, 3D and depth uh, enabled uh, like icons that seem to have a bit of a curve to them. And if that's the design trends of 2020, then bravo for Deepin for jumping on that trend super quickly. Now it's not personally my cup of tea. I think I'm still very much stuck in the flat design phase, but uh, you know, something colorful and spicy, let's make it happen. Now so far so good, but here's where the wheels start falling off for me. Uh, while Deep in itself is a relatively uh, coherent and beautiful desktop to, to use and to look at in a flash, when you actually start trying to live with this thing, it gets a little bit more frustrating. So taking a bit of a leaf from EG's Distro Delves series, if you haven't checked out EG's uh, YouTube channel, definitely go do that. His Distro Delve series is very good for giving a consistent baseline review of every Linux distro that's out there. When it comes to testing out different application types, uh, we've got moderate and mixed success. So app images, for example, app image support is there, seems to work fairly well, although the theming does get a little bit funky because we're kind of using a weird version of GTK theming. Uh, also, .deb package files install, for the most part, okay, as long as Debian can, or apt can find the appropriate um, dependencies in its own repositories. This is also where we start to run into issues. Because of the fact Deepin is based and developed in mainland China, for the most part, the mirrors that are available are also in China, which leads to really slow updates and, uh, and app store loading times outside of China. Makes sense, right? Now, usually on a Linux distro, it's very easy to jump in and change the server settings of where you're pulling your software from. 
Uh, up to this point, I haven't figured out a, a quick or efficient way of doing that, aside from jumping into the, literally going into the terminal and looking at the apt sources list and editing that through a text editor or through Nano or whatever. Now, the other downside with that is that just looking around for what mirrors are available for your software updates uh, means that at the moment, as the time of recording this video, a lot of the mirrors were actually behind and didn't even have any of the packages available for deep in version 20. Uh, so that means at the moment we're all pulling from the same server cluster uh, in mainland China, which is terrible for download speeds in general. I don't know, feel free to let me know in the comments below if there's a way that you can fix this up, but it just means that when you're scrolling through the app store and when you're downloading updates and software, things are pretty slow to load in. Uh, now app stores being slow to load in is not exactly anything new, um, but definitely the downloads of the software itself is a little bit chunky. Now the other thing that I want to add that I wish was a feature that was rolled out across the Linux desktop is the use of a cloud account to sync up all of your settings and apps and all of that fun stuff to be able to plonk it down on a new system. Deepin is working on this cloud sync service that at the moment, again, only works in mainland China. I don't know why exactly this is at this point. I'd say it sounds like they're just testing it. Uh, either that or they'd have to, um, they'd have to, they'd ha probably have some interesting um, regulation issues that they'd have to get approved um, to have that kind of service available worldwide. All that is to say the app store works and updates kind of work. I actually got a weird error when I tried to update for the first time and, um, and it was just because one of the repos wasn't pinging. Um, or wasn't responding. Again, I'm going to put that down to just the distance. Um, it seems to be, it seems to think it's okay now. So it's when you start scratching the surface of this very, very pretty distribution that uh, at least at, in a market outside of China, it starts to uh, get a little bit ugly. Now, like I was mentioning before, while dev packages install nicely and app images seem to run fine, also uh, password protected dot ra um, archive types work pretty well. They're usually the trickiest ones to get working on Linux. Flatpak reference files are completely useless in this distribution out of the box, uh, which is a bit disappointing, I guess. And this is where I'll start wrapping up my thoughts about Deepin. Um, using this desktop environment uh, is, is wonderful. It feels like a holiday to Fiji. It's, it's beautiful, it, everything looks gorgeous, but uh, you, don't, you wouldn't want to live there because the infrastructure is not great. You probably won't be able to do the same amount of work that you'd uh, get done elsewhere. And beyond that, my analogy starts to fall apart. But mitigating some of the, some of the bigger problems that Deepin has moving forward, Deepin has a relatively slow release cycle. Uh, and not being able to access super up-to-date software and not having either Snap or Flatpak built in out of the box means that you're reliant on the software and how up-to-date it is uh, in the App Store, which for the most part is pulling from Debian 10.5, stable software to be sure, but pretty out of date. And it's only up to deep in as to whether they want to provide more up-to-date versions of the software in their App Store uh, for whatever it is that you're wanting to do with your desktop. Uh, it, the track record isn't great with keeping those sort of software up to date because again, most of the software that they're going to keep up to date is gonna suit a Chinese market. So while the desktop environment gets a massive tick of approval from me, the, the Im underlying infrastructure of Deepin still leaves a lot to be desired. And that's where I'll leave today's video. Well, let me know what you think. As always, I'm gonna be really curious to see how quickly this Deepin desktop version can get backported into Ubuntu Deepin, for example. That will give a lot of, that'll fill in a lot of the gaps with the infrastructure that, uh, that the Deepin uh, OS leaves us. But very gorgeous, very coherent, uh, wonderful user experience. Just has some uh, big chunks missing for uh, markets outside of China. Kind of feels like all of the Huawei phones out there right now. That's a different story for another time. See you all in the next video. Hey, Blaine here. Thanks for checking out the Infinitely Galactic Project. Look, if you wanna find more videos like this, then definitely go check out the channel, subscribe if you're new, turn on notifications, all that good stuff. And you can chat with me on Twitter at Ingalactic. See you in the next one.